have outlined and, and correctly so accurately so the gains that you've been able to make in terms of the reduction in serious crimes, etc. But the public is not necessarily comforted by that, although it's accurate, because the main barometer for testing the work of the police service in our environment and context is the murder rate. Mm -hmm. You've said every murder hurts you to the core. What do you think is at the core of this significant murder rate that does not seem to be going down anytime soon in this country? Sure. Well, there has been, in the 17th of August to the 16th of August, my last year, there's actually been a 6 to 8% reduction in homicide in my last year compared to the year before. The year before, um, 17th of August to the 16th of August, there were 542. On uh, my last year, it was 504, something like that. So there were actually 30 odd homicides less. Uh, having said that, it means very little to the citizens, and, and you're correct, and that, is, and that is just the point. So I don't speak with statistics. Because the, uh, New York City, for example, in the mid-90s, there was a 53% reduction in homicide. There was a 61% reduction in violent crime. Mayor Rudy Giuliani, Bill Bratton, Commissioner Carrick, they boasted on that, and the public did not feel safer. But what's driving the murder rate? Well, I, I'm coming to that. So what, what I'm doing is there are two operational um, directions I'm going. One is to reduce crime, but also to take away the perception and fear of crime. And there are a number of different elements that we have established to, to deal with that as it pertains to reduction of, of, of serious crime, we did not get where we are overnight Paul. It took, it took 15 years of neglect, mistakes, um, bad decisions for us to be where we are. So the 20 odd percent of persons who are dissatisfied, they expected that we would just turn back, in, turn the clock and in, do a 180 in, in a, the space of a year. It took 15 years for us to be where we are. I'm not, going to say, I'm not saying it's going to take 15 and years to get back. what happened specifically in those 15 years to get us here? Is it illegal drugs and guns, a combination yeah, yeah. of that? A number of different things. And that's why, for example, um, there was a, a report on 95.5. They did a poll because apparently Tony was a little upset that the poll had Gary Griffith so high, which again was unfortunate. So uh, he, he put a poll. Let us judge Gary Griffith by the serious crime, by murders. Has he passed or failed? Now, if it is that you want to, to blame the police for all of these things, and it goes to your question, the number of, of shortcomings that we have, which I intend to deal with, it's outside of the Toronto Tobago Police Service. So whilst I'm trying to clean up the police service and improve it for us to be the best we can be, there are a number of factors that have contributed greatly towards the reason why we are where we are after 15 years of mistakes. The, the fact of... Um, where, the, you know, we say that we have a, a youth problem. We don't have a youth problem. We have an adult problem through bad parenting, where parents have allowed young persons now to turn into a life of crime because they benefit from it. And then when they, they get killed, they start to scream and say that the police too wicked. So the police, we are to blame because of bad parenting by, by a number of parents. The police, we are to blame when communities try to embolden and support criminal elements and protect them. That is the, the fault of the police. It is the fault of the police when these persons in the communities refuse to give evidence or become witnesses when when murders take place, because for they speak about the about the detection rate, the majority of detection rate in homicides is based on witness, a witness coming forward. Witnesses do not come forward. They may have reasons for it. I understand that, but that is the fault of the police. Apparently, it is the fault of the police that when we arrest someone um, with a firearm, that it means that that person could kill twenty or thirty persons. That is a, virtually worse than a terrorist and they will be given bail the following day. That is the fault of the police. It is the fault of the police that when it is that they are sentenced, they, they, a, a person with a firearm can, can get one year in prison, a man who steals three mangoes can get three years in prison. That is the fault of the police and Gary Griffith. It is the fault of the police when, when we actually uh, arrest the person, prosecute and they go into prison and they still have the capability to call shots outside so that will increase the homicide rate. That becomes the fault of the police. So in, in, the, in the eyes of Tony Lee, all of these things that have contributed towards homicide, it is Gary Griffith and the police to blame. I think it is unfortunate. The Trinidad Tobago Police Service, we are human. People seem to forget that. We bleed as well. We have feelings. But the difference is that the police officers, they go out there to protect persons who are strangers. They're willing to give their lives. But we see persons, they seem more likely to try to help and look after the well-being and the rights of criminals rather than law-abiding citizens. But, but wouldn't you admit also, while the police service, in terms of public perception and statistics, is doing better under your watch, the public really has a legitimate concern of a police performance in past decades? Yeah, well, uh, and I, I cannot, so, so you, and you're, you're correct. So, so, so the, the idea that the public is not justified at some level, including Mr. Mr. Lee and others, in saying part of the reason for where we are today, in addition to criminality, overall criminality, is a lack of countering that through the operational agency of the state, the police force. Paul, is much more than that. I mean, 
for the I have what I have seen, I have seen a massive amount of bad management, misappropriation of funds, rural police officers, police officers who have contributed greatly towards making life difficult for other police officers in the performance of their duties. You can't get away with that. That happens worldwide. We are maybe at a higher level, and that is why what I am putting is proper systems for good leadership, measurement of performance, accountability, and to make sure that that is proper management. If we don't have systems to measure performance and to make officers accountable, we will have this, the, um, these problems that you, you spoke about. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it is true, but we have made mistakes in the past. My job and my intention is to explain to the public, listen, we can admit we made mistakes. We can look at day of total policing. I will be always honest to say, listen, we were wrong. We made mistakes. And we would still make mistakes. But we are judged on things in the court of public opinion based on matters that it, I think is rather than fair. If you notice, there have been 200 homicides this year, gang-related. One gang member killed another gang member. Not one person in any community actually saw anything. There have been five police shootings, five odd police shootings, and everybody in the community saw. It is amazing. You only see when the police are involved in shootings, and then with the comments that they make, they're not coming forward to give evidence because the, what they state on social media, the all too wicked posse, with the lady with the towel and stuff, they make these comments, and they know exactly what they're doing. It's a deliberate intention to undermine the confidence and trust that I'm building in the police service. Because when they do that, the court of public perception kicks in, which is why I become very... Um, open to explain, okay, so the police, we were involved in, um, we were wrong. So how did the bullet hit the police officer? How did, is there a hole in his bulletproof vest? How is there, is there a hole um, in his jacket? How is there um, recently the situation in Santa Cruz? Did, did the police officer shoot himself? So and many times we are judged by persons and what I'm trying to do as much as possible and more importantly, not just try to defend them, but to put systems to prevent the further situations where police will, will um, try to abuse their authority through polygraph testing, through drug testing. And again, I would get some pushback by police officers, but I am working hard to make sure I could put systems to ensure that the police officers are disciplined, they adhere to the law, they do what is required, but I must also try to defend them if they are unjustly uh, attacked. Download the ISO app now for up-to-the-minute news and exclusive news content and visit our website, ISO.com. ISO. News travels fast.